I'm going to start the recording now. Progress. Yes, you. They can hear us. Yep. We'll uh, start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Call the meeting to order with the Pledge of Allegiance. At 10 12 a.m. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We need a model to approve the agenda. Are there any corrections to the agenda? Uh, roll call. Will St. John's? Did we get a second for yes. the approving the agenda? Did we get a second or don't we need that? No, it's, it's, it's yes. It's, it's it's all the thing. She's following the thing. So it's pledge and then approval agenda and then roll call. But it's a, it's it's your meeting, however you want to do it. If you want to go roll call first and then do the agenda, that's no, fine. I'd like to approve the agenda so I don't forget to go back to it. I second it. Okay, approved and seconded. Now we'll have roll call. Will St. John? Yes, here. Uh, Kim Fleming? Yes, I'm here. Uh, Stan Weiner? Here. here. Roland? Dolores? Here. Michelle? Dan O'Connor? Here. Mike. Michael. Mike Maturin. Mike is, Maturin. He's he's uh, yeah. not here, but with the with the crew. Yeah. Okay. Is there any public comment? Persons wishing to address the board. I, I'll, I'll interject this part. Uh, there's a letter, an email that came to me um, from Beverly Sladen on, uh, I'll just read the email to the board. It says to the ACCAOA board of directors, I am writing on behalf of several senior ladies in the gentle chair exercise class. I sent Mr. Avery an email last week. Since I haven't heard back from him, I've decided to send you this note with the encouragement from several others who was also disappointed in the closing of our class. In this difficult times we were living through, this has been another sad and stressful situation that we've had to deal with. We are upset uh, about losing our exercise program led by Jan Klein. It is our understanding that the grant which funded the program has ended. We question why this hasn't been renewed or reapplied for. I see in today's paper, the Community Foundation of Northeastern Michigan recently awarded over $100,000 for 59 organizations requesting grant. A Pena Area Senior Citizens Council was one for a program that they are running for their senior community. Why wasn't our community represented? Jan's program was based on her years of teaching, knowledge, and experience working with the public and senior community. I would have thought the program she created and the positive feelings that we have built towards our senior center would have been a high priority for the council. I do understand that the exercise program was only a small part of your wonderful endeavors, but it was a feather in your cap from our perspective. We are happy and proud to say we are part of the seniors activities. I see in a recent ACCOA newsletter, the first page says September is healthy aging month. It goes to say, stay fit, adventurous, healthy and connected. Further down, I read, take control of your health. Number one, find a good and balanced exercise program that describes the participants, that describes the participants and our exercise classes to a T. We request that you take a look at this situation and reinstate our program if you can. For um, recent phone calls, it appears Jan has found another facility for us to meet. She has built up a following with her uh, encouragement and positive outlook. I'm sure most of, uh, I'm sure most, if not all participants will continue with her and will deep down harbor a negative feeling for the center. It is too bad this situation has happened as we uh, all appreciate the classes, facilities and friendship made. Hopefully this does not 
last, we can uh, again enjoy the services provided by the center. Thank you for your consideration, and I hope to hear back from you from your group, Beverly G. Slate. <clears throat> Do you want to comment further on the reason for? Well, I can, I can, I can comment to this. So it's a, uh, it's, it's an unfortunate situation that it was misrepresented um, by Jen to her class participants. We informed her that the grant that she was originally started on. Um, let me go back. Jan came to us asking to use facility space to to do classes. I, I informed her that those classes, if you're gonna be doing it, do not belong to you. They belong to ACCOA. Um, and there was a little bit of a little pushback with that, but we said what was more important was to get the seniors their ability to exercise. So we um, wrote a grant for her to do such. And at that time, the grant was for a few thousand dollars. That ran its course. We still continued to pay her after a few months after the grant had long since expended. Uh, I was contacted um, when I was doing our audit, we needed to put her on payroll because it just doesn't look right every month to cut a check to just a person. So if she wanted to stay on, I advised her that she would have to go through payroll, which, uh, which means she would have to fill out an application, uh, fill out an application through us, uh, that she would need to, you know, we would have to have her background check on file, all of those, all of those different things uh, that we do for our normal employees. Uh, and most importantly, her income and revenue would be taxed. Before, it was just a, a check. So she declined to, to do that uh, for whatever her reasons. I informed her that she had reached the maximum amount of money that you could receive without reporting it to the IRS and that she would either have to either come on payroll or give us a W-9, which would mean she would be a private vendor. So everything on our end had to be above board. So she declined and said that she would be, you know, moving her, her program someplace else. Again, we see that this program is not one person, it belongs to the community. So at current, we are in the process of looking for another fitness instructor. We have had, we have a fitness instructor that's gonna be provided to us by MSU Extension, but that's not gonna be until January. And that's gonna be Tai Chi. Uh, we have a couple of our employees who are now certified in matter of balance. They'll be teaching some classes here uh, once they're able to do, uh, do that. Uh, but at the immediate moment, we are still actively looking for uh, a person to teach classes and have those classes available. It is not because we don't have any money to pay her. It is not because uh, that there was a grant because grants are not guaranteed. So, but a paycheck is. So that is the reason why there is no current program here and that she declined to, to do services. So I just wanna clear the air there so that people know that at any moment, if she decided to become an employee of ACCOA, she could be compensated for her time. It would be taxed, it would be tracked, and it would be reported. And she'd still teach her classes here. Does anyone have any questions for Lenny? Are you going to respond to these ladies in some way? <laughs> I did reach out several times. I reached out to one person that left me a phone message. I left five phone messages. Um, I left several emails um, and they know where to find me. Okay. And this is, and this, and this is where, this is where I kind of sit with that. You know, before it got to a letter to the board, you easily could have just walked into my office. My door is usually always open and I'm available. To have to have a sit down with anybody that has a concern, um, but yes, I mean there were some times that they, you know, Jan didn't agree with our masking policy and took the class to the harbor. And I said, well, those classes you just can't make that because that liability goes with us. You know, we're liable because we're covering those things. So, uh, but we welcome, like I said, we thank Jan for her time. We thank Jan for her putting um, those classes together and keeping them going through COVID. Uh, but again, we have to continue to move on and we're going to try to provide the best um, 
activities that we possibly can going forward. Can Jan rent this <clears throat> hall from us once a week? Absolutely. I, I gave her I gave her that option too. I said we would you you would be unpaid. You just be a volunteer and you can just use the space and store your equipment. Well, her clients can pay her if she wants money. Exactly. And she declined that option as well because again, you know, she's she was making a considerable amount of money yeah. per hour. So but like I said, you know, it for us, you needed to go through proper channels and protocols that are in place and that had to be through payroll so do we as a board do we need to address this with miss blazing or do you want to um, go us talk to miss blazing well i i didn't yet i could or do you think we should send a letter from accoa to her <clears throat> or should i just call her on the phone as a friend you can do that i mean i, I really on behalf of yeah. yeah, I don't think it needs to be some formal thing. I just think it was a, a, a lot of misinformation. And I think, yeah. Well, since she sent it to the board, we have to respond in some way just to say that she was heard and even right. you try to get back to her, Lenny. So if, uh, if you guys want to construct the letter, we can we can do that. I have her email here. So if, if that's what the board wishes to do, then we can do that. Okay, would you like me to maybe come in tomorrow and you can help me write the letter? <laughs> Not tomorrow. Oh, that I can't do it tomorrow <laughs> either. <laughs> There's so much stuff done tomorrow. I have an audit yeah. for, uh, and a pop-up pantry still. Uh, may, maybe not even Thursday. <laughs> but well, we will get a, a, a letter. letter. Yeah, okay. we could get something to her and let her know that the board did, did, did. Her email was, was we and we we were yeah, fine. So I don't really think you need to go into every point D. Every point D. Yeah. No. I, no. Just the things that you were talking because it was difficult for her to become, to go on payroll. Right. We were told by Mary so we had to either put her on payroll or. Her. Okay, we will get a letter and I'll make sure you read it before I send it. Okay. Just to be sure I'm that safe. Sounds, right. That sounds fine. Okay, we need to. Uh, we need to uh, approve the August meeting minutes. Did everyone have a chance to look at the, the meeting? Yeah, I move to approve. I move to approve. Um, I have a question on it first. Didn't we at our last meeting appoint or approve uh, for Kim Fleming to take over for uh, Stephanie Walker. It had to be last meeting because that's when we read the letter from her. So should that state that in answer? It can just it, it can be under either old business or new business. You can add that as a. You want it added? You can yeah, add that. I did not add it because I thought it was just. Um, so just she, to a point, yeah. maybe that's all we had to do. <coughs> I just considered it housekeeping and did not just want to get housekeeping. Yeah, it should be on paper. So yeah, that, that, that'll be fun. You can just add, just yeah. say that she moved from a member at large to a Yeah, okay. Three meetings ago. Oh. Well, three meetings ago. Oh, well then. She moved into a uh, member at didn't that have to be last last meeting? Because that's when we read the resignation no, letter. No, no. I already no. had taken that spot no. from a prior opening. Right. Okay, so, so we yeah. don't even have no, to do have that. To do that. Okay. okay. No. Yeah. This one, this last meeting was about the subcommittees. Right. 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 Okay. Okay. Is there any uh, changes to the minutes or additions, changes? Okay, I'll hear a motion to accept the approval of the August 2021 meeting minutes. I'll make a motion. Meeting minutes. Stan made a motion. Is there a second? Will. Will. Mm -hmm. Okay, the commissioner's report and Bill Thompson is not here today. 
Uh, how about Dan O'Connor? Just asking for my vote, right, Lloris? You sorry, I'm having trouble hearing a little bit. No, uh, your uh, your uh, superintendent report. Okay, okay. No, thank you. That came through a little better. Thanks, Lenny. So, uh, yeah, we are uh, wrapping up our sinking fund project, trying to um, finish the installation of doors and windows, and are in week five of the school year, navigating some challenging times with uh, staffing and substitutes. So. I know I bring this up every month, but if, we, if you happen to know of anyone looking to uh, potentially sub, we are uh, needing any position possible as we're trying to move as many pieces around on our chessboard to try to keep us staffed and keep us face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, which we've been successful in doing so far and uh, plan on continuing to do that. Um, other than that, we just uh, dealing with whatever may present itself each day and doing the best we can to keep the kids here and learning and having fun. So do you have to wear a mask now if come to a football game? Nope, not outside Dolores. You're you're okay. Inside right now, yes, that's the case. I know that's uh not a very popular decision uh for many and I get that and that's not where we want to be, but the best tool that we have right now to minimize the amount of students that were in quarantine. We had um, over 100 students on quarantine. As of a week ago, we almost have all those students back in class now. And um, if for those that don't maybe don't have to live the quarantine guidance, you know, that we have to live on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, if everybody's masked, we essentially don't have to quarantine anyone other than the positive case. But if, uh, if one student is unmasked in that quarantine circle, they all have to quarantine. And so makes it really complicated trying to work through it and uh, know there's lots of frustration and opinions and, and things. We're just trying to do the best we can with the guidance we have to keep us learning and moving forward. How are you doing on bus drivers? <laughs> Uh, every staffing position right now is day to day, Dolores. So um, we actually have uh, two staff members that have some medical um, situations coming up. So we're we're short on drivers right now. We are lucky to have a, a few that uh, we've cross trained in different categories. Uh, we did throw out a posting on Sunday night. Probably some people almost chuckled at it, is what some people you know kind of told me, where it was like, "Hey, you just want to come to work every day, and we're not sure what you're going to do, but." We guarantee we'll need you, and it might be in food service one day, it could be in pair pro another day, it could be a bus driver the next day, and just trying to build up our uh, our staff in terms of flexible people to be able to jump and dive in, you know, wherever they can. So to answer your question, Doris, we're we're very tight on bus drivers right now. So if there are people with uh, existing well, CDLs out there willing to to help us out a little Gotta bit, gotta be a headache. Gladly take them. So Lenny, if you can hear me, it looks what like time a bandwidth. Do your bus routes run? Like, uh, do they run like early, early in the morning or done by like nine o'clock or, and then your afternoons or what time? or your afternoons runs? Yeah, so typically a, a bus run will start between 6 and 6.30 and they'll be off the bus and kids will be dropped off by 8.15, 8.30. So, and then in the after evening, it's, uh, you know, 2.45, the bus starts to, you know, be inspected and prepared. And then um, would typically pick up the kids around 3 to 3.30, depending on which building you're at, and then uh, be finished with the bus run between 5 and 5.30. Kids will be dropped off by 8.30. Okay, any questions, Dan? Thank you, Dan. Um, 
Nemska, or no, yeah, Nemska. Vicky, Vicky with us today. Oh no. Uzi 989-58-4696. Is that you, Mary? That should be. That should be LP. Okay. Okay. Is Vicky with us today? Or? I, I don't think so. Everybody said that there's like a, like a small delay. So uh, just wait a second and then and then we'll wait. But did he see her on the email? Okay, so let's move on. Okay. Um, Regional Advisory Report, Mike Matern is not here today. Mm -hmm. uh, In-home service, Leanne. Yeah, I don't know if she's coming up or she- Did, did you say my name? So give us a second. Did they say Leanne? I have no idea, I can't hear her. I know. Yes. You're they did call you Leanne. Okay, because <laughs> it's it's very choppy on our end. We're having a hard time following. Yeah. Leanne um, is it is we're waiting on you to give your report. So one of you have to unmute. I'm I, unmuted. Did, did you say my name? Yes. Did they say Leanne? Yeah, there's there's a big play. Yes, Leanne. Yeah. Um, you want to come up, Leanne? I'll come up. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stop my video. Does that make it better? Yes. Yes. Okay. Coming up. I think the owl and the Chromebook don't like each other. <laughs> uh, I, well, I was I was excited to see it work, and then they're they're not working well together. Um, Do you so, think we should have Julie and Shauna come up? They'll, they'll, right away too? They'll, they'll come up as needed. Yeah, there's a there's a huge There you go. So maybe if the other girls could come up, the other people come up too. I'm. Yeah. It's easier to hear you, is and. Right. Okay. We <laughs> All right, I don't know which one you want me to wait. I'll kind of start with what I think. Um, so, as per your board report, we did a total of 640 hours uh, and 15 minutes worth of work between all of our children. So, that's exciting that number continues to rise. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, last month, or in August, I closed eight files. Um, COVID still seems to be the hot topic. Um, we are having issues with um, clients asking our staff if they've been vaccinated, which we're starting to put the word out that they don't need to answer that. Um, and, and kind of my thing that I've been saying to them when they ask me if my staff is vaccinated, I say to them, I don't ask you if you're vaccinated before I come into your house. So I would request for them. So, um, but we, we had one client that specifically was like, I just can't take the chance of having anybody in my house, so I need to close services until the office. Um, you know, and like I said, other I had somebody show up and the client turns away on the door to them because they said they weren't vaccinated. So people are very particular right now. Um, we have three new clients in the month. Um, I did lose um, a 
UCW that still seems to be a revolving door of people come in, we train them. Sometimes we don't know what happens. They, they're gone before we can even start services for people or um, they just, they don't give notice. You know, 10 o'clock at night, they're letting you know that, that today will be the last day. Yeah, so. Um, we had a staff meeting on 8-8, so we're starting to do new stuff with the staff, even though we still are non Um We are giving them tools that they can use in the science house. So one of the things- Recording in progress. Does that tell anything about COVID or, or no. the flu or no? It's just breathing it's problems. They're falling. Or it's something. just it's just a ruler. So when they notice that you had a really bad scratch um, that maybe looked like it could be getting infected, they're going to want to keep an eye on it. So what they're going to do oh. is they're going to use that ruler and they're going to say, okay, the scratch is you know this long. Um, this is what the scratch looked like. The next time they get it, because normally you're going to be like, oh no no, it's nothing. I don't need to go to the doctor for a time. Um, when they come back the next time, they're just going to kind of say like, hey, how's that scratch doing? Okay. And, and kind of look to see, is it going away? Is it getting bigger? Is it getting worse? Um, we, we have a client that we're kind of monitoring the progress of, of some issues. Um, you know, we've been working closely with the family and the family has been very grateful to us for it. Um, so that really was really, really helpful. So uh, they great the, tool. Yeah, Meg did the in-service on that. So they come back to you with this information say she's got a cut half an inch long and then it's a week right. later they come back to you and say no it's down to nothing or it's yep. two inches it's long all documented in generations because if the family ever came back and said you know my loved one has this in, you know this sore and now her arm is being removed because it was so infected you know we've got documentation that we were looking at it the conversation we had with the client like if we were able to get some medical help like what what's going on with it yeah, people are very much people fall in their home and then we'll say i don't need to go to the emergency room I'm fine. right you know well that gives us kind of a bad feeling when you're leaving there like we're we're short we're shorting them something like that yeah. so we document but once that information comes to you do you if you feel necessary do you contact the family or do you just go to that person we, we kind of do it in tandem. We do contact the family and we say, hey, you know, we're working with your loved one on this. This is what we're understanding from them. We kind of use it as a Okay, can, can just in case us. that person, I'm fine, I'm fine. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, our next staff meeting uh, is on the 10th, 7. Um, we're hoping to meet with Ellie. Um, she's our DHS representative. So she refers clients to us for care. Um, there's some questions from the staff members about, you know, they send us what they call time and task. So it's just very broad, you know, pay transfer and mobility, health work. So the staff is, is more like, what kind of help do these people need? What's going on with them? So Ellie's gonna provide a little bit of overview about what qualifies people for the DHS program and then exactly what does it mean to do these tasks that they've assigned and what is allowable and not allowable. Because from my understanding, for people to qualify for DHS, they have to agree to certain services. Some we can get by with if we don't do it, they're okay with it, but there are some that are required, otherwise they can use the program. So we're gonna find out more for that. Um, and then currently on our wait list are eight participants. So whittled down a little bit from last.
next month, I'm hoping that next month is completely gone. So um, I'll, I'll jump ahead a little bit. I have three staff members starting tomorrow, no, Thursday. So three new staff members that I think are going to be a really great addition. I'm really excited to have them. This is to go into the home and yep. clean or bathe yep. or whatever is necessary. Yep. Um, one of them came from um, compassionate care. Oh. Um, one of them used to be a Sina. Um, she's been doing other things, but she wants to start doing this type of work again. Um, she really liked our flexibility and, and kind of what we offered as far as um, you know how we can how we can work around things for her. Um, and then uh, the third person uh, used to work for Hairstyle House, so she worked with disabled, uh, mentally disabled people. And I, I, from what I understand from her, those people lived in the house, so she took care of six gentlemen at a time. So she's got a really good background. So the training they pretty much have already. They do. We're still gonna them. we're still gonna send them out for a week with our staff so that they can learn our paperwork, they can learn generations. Um, you know, but we expect, yeah, yeah, they can you know follow our policies and procedures. Okay, okay, that's all I got for you guys. Okay, Thanks. does anyone have any questions for Leanne? All right, well, you hope I win what? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, checker game yeah. I'm playing. Yeah. Oh, a troublemaker, <laughs> Rowan Lynch. <laughs> Oh, sure. He loves that. Yeah. I know he does. I know he does. That's why I sit next month. Thank you, Leanne. Uh, thank you, guys. Have a great day. Thank you. Okay, Julie. You're right here ready. I'm right here ready. Ready, willing, and almost able. <laughs> able as it's going to get. Yeah. Okay, you always all have my yep. budget papers. Um, as you can see, I've been going over budget with my food purchases, but costs of everything have went up. Um, the food bank is really low on meats, which is, I was able to get some meats from there before, which helped, but I can't now. So that's why my budget, you know, is going the way it is. Um, we've been losing some people and we're gonna be losing more because it's that time of year and I've already had some people telling me they're heading back down, you know, Florida or downstate or wherever they go. So it's the time of year that we're going to start, you know, losing some people because of being snowbirds. Yeah. Um, Home delivered, you're talking. Yeah, both, and really, even, but... yeah, even some of our congregates, you know, are going down. Um, we have had more people wanting to just come and pick up their meals instead of staying in. So I've had like last night, I had two couples that picked up meals and only one couple stayed in the building. So I've been, you know, just asking people to call in, you know, before noon, eat, whether they're picking up or not, because that helps us we can have everything ready for them then if we know. So any questions? How many in? in out of congregate, are they coming in? Well, it varies between none to six right now, is how it's been there, you know, where it's been. So, okay, does anyone have any questions for Julie? Thank you, Julie. You're welcome. The two of you are eating lunch, right? What's for lunch? Pork chops. I'll have noodles, and I don't remember the vegetables. He'll eat. <laughs> okay. I suppose you want two pork chops. You got to put it out there on record like that. Sure. <laughs> make, make me seem like a fat kid. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Transportation, Sean is not. Sean, Sean is actually doing a transportation at the moment. You're going to do it? Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll tell you. <clears throat> so we just, uh, as of two o'clock today, we'll be closing a contract with Logisticare, aka, well, Logisticare is no longer, it's now Medova Care. So we just closed that contract with them today. So we'll be providing routes and runs for them. 
um, which has been a very, very long process of trying to get them to commit. And today at two o'clock, they'll sign a formal contract with us, which means our transportation program will be very, very busy um, providing uh, transportation services. So that's super exciting. That's a lot of hard work uh, with the team and getting those things uh, situated. But uh, hard work does pay off. So hopefully, you know, that will lead to more employees and, you know, and growth and, and actual uh, steadier income coming in to the transportation program. Is that, is that VA or no? Uh, no, that is through Medicaid. So, um, yeah, and the rates are very different than anything that we've ever been able. Where we we actually um, their what their rate of reimbursement is one point five times what we normally get. So, if it's fifty five cents a mile, it's almost two for their per mile. Um, so, so that's the you know. That's, that's, that's excellent. Um, and then we also closed a contract with Alcona VA. So that's providing veterans transportations uh, to doctor's appointments in Alcona County for their VA program. And they're gonna be using their millages, uh, their millage uh, to pay for those veterans trips. Um, so those veterans who are in Alcona County can get with Tony Atkins and get on that list. And then once they're on the approved list, uh, and registered with their program that the uh, Alcona VA will pay for their transportations to and from their doctor's appointment. Oh, this is <clears throat> so does the other clients pay us, uh, let's say $10 an hour? For? Plus mileage? There's... They have to go to Alpena for um, dialysis well there's different rates for different different individuals there's in it, in county rates there's private pay rates and they differ depending on the funding source so you know we try to make it as economical as we possibly can for our seniors and for people in the community but not just seniors i, I think we probably transported a handful of actual seniors most of it is 50 to 60 year olds who needing, you know, to get to their oncology appointment, to needing to get, you know, I, you know, we love to take an Alpina run, but most of the times if our drivers are getting in the car, they're going to Ann Arbor, they're going to, yeah. you know, Port Huron, they're going to uh, downstate to Cadillac, you know, or to U of M. It's not a short run. So, you know, those, those, those are gone. Um, we've had uh, some clients who, because there's no, like, there's no, like a DeVita or someplace that people can go get a transportation program. So we've been taking people to their dialysis three times a week and that racks up. So we try to use these other programs, these other big reimbursement programs to offset the cost on people who have to pay privately. So we can give them a break private pay and then have the bigger reimbursements on the other end. Is it based on income? The we, private pay? We do not base things on a, off of income because then that would uh, we don't want to pre pre exclude those ind individuals, but it is based okay. off of competitive rates. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Lenny? Uh, food bank, Lenny. Do you want to do Debbie's? Food yeah. Bank? So there's going to be a food pantry tomorrow. Um, that's going to be open to the public. Uh, the pantry distribution is going to be from four to six o'clock. Uh, it is going to be first come first serve. Uh, usually we have been uh, getting food out in about 45 minutes. Uh, on average, we're still hitting somewhere in about a neighborhood of 200 to 250 boxes. Um, well, if you, count, if you count the ones that are already targets, so we're average about 300. We have about 250 on site and then we go and we deliver 50 to 75 um, on, uh, on that day. We also have a direct give uh, box program. I believe, Raleigh, you said the number was somewhere uh, of the ones that we actually got signatures could have been somewhere between 40 and 50 uh, individuals that came that day to pick up boxes. And those oh, were last week. Yeah, for, for last week. So we usually do two giving programs a month. Um, currently, our food pantry director resigned. We are in the process of hiring another food pantry director. Uh, once that person gets up and going, uh, they'll be trained up to take over the program moving forward. Uh, there's some fun stuff coming in the works. I don't want to put the cart before the horse and reveal it too much as of right now, 
but there is a major player looking to move from the bottom of the state into Northeastern Michigan. And if that does happen, the Food Bank of Lincoln is gonna play a big partnership within there. Is the, the person that you might possibly hire for the food bank, would they be able to make it tomorrow, do you think, to kind of get their feet wet? And... No. No? no. <laughs> I mean, just it's, come and watch it's, and it's, it's not going to happen. No? Okay. It's, it's not going to happen. You yeah. know, because if anybody worth their salt and, and is a classy individual, I would require that they should give two weeks to their employer, yeah. not 24 hours, not 48 hours. Oh, this person has already got a job then. We will hire the best candidate for this position, Dolores, and then that person will be trained and be ready for the October's pantry. Um, the pop-up pantry is at the ARA. Is it is currently at the ARA site? We will be putting together a winter plan because that's going to change because the ARA site doesn't doesn't offer plowing, um, and we don't have any type of snow breakers to chop up all that ice. So most. Uh, we're probably going to have to talk to the village and probably uh, do our pop-up pantries here in the park. They have offered that in the past because they could plow that because that's within their, their jurisdiction. And then we'll be able to use uh, the facility here uh, to as, as a distribution and site for that. Okay, uh, daycare, Kelly. <laughs> oh, I'm okay. already on tap for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Hi. Um, well, since the last time we spoke, I have an active client file started. Uh, I put on an assessment with Mike Rice, and uh, hopefully, we'll be having that person here relatively soon. She is also going on another assessment tomorrow with me, and I'm going to take a day center folder out there to uh, introduce to the caregiver, because it seems they may need a break. So I, have <coughs> I don't have anything new other than that. Of course, with Jan not being here, I'm not up here in the mornings with the, the exercise classes or anything, but I have helped, in, I've helped Lenny take over uh, with the Debbie Case Kingship of us with Meg Rice as well. And we are in the process of helping two families actively with the Kingship program. Do you contact an individual or do you wait for them to contact you? They usually, I usually find out from, about them through Leanne when we do in home services requests. She will ask, you know, if they're interested in home cooked meals, homemaking, personal care. She'll ask about the day center. I've also had other people approach me in Chris Mark. And I've given my card to those people as well. So they sought me out uh, actively. Um, I'm trying to get the word out as much as I can. And um, there's as many people that have shown interest through the AMS program as well that seem to write in most of my referrals. Well, I do have a name that I don't know if, if I should give you the name and let you call them and see if they're interested. They asked me about it, uh -huh. about the daycare. Oh, bring it to me, absolutely. And they ask about uh, age, that I, sort of thing, and how you charge, if it's income-based or whatever, which I didn't know. So I will give you the name and sure. let you follow yeah, up on it. Absolutely. Okay. Either way, if that, if that happens, Dolores, I'd be more than happy to speak with them. Okay, I'll give, uh, I'll give you the name sure. then. Sure, sure. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Kinship, is that? So our family, our family service specialist uh, also resigned. She, uh, she gave us her 24 hour notice. Is uh, that Kelly right. Zoe? Is Kelly gonna? Well, we, 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 yeah. yes. Megan and I have been working on it while Debbie's not here. So. Right. <clears throat> So, um, you know, there's a couple of things, but if you want to talk talk to that, Meg, or did you? The kinship program is the one. We had two applicants who had reached out to us. Um, it's grandparents raising children, their grandchildren. So um, when school started to open, folks were looking there up to $300 a year reimbursement funding from the MSA to close the grandchildren. So we've had two uh, with, uh, outfits of kids 
for the scanner. So they are they have to provide they fill out the form, um, they and then provide us with the receipt to get reimbursed. Or the other option is, is that we get the money and we go do the shopping. We encourage the family to do their own shopping. We don't know what 12 year old girls like or want um, or any sizes. So um, we've got that going. The telephone reinsurance program is still happening. Kelly takes the call during the week. And I help out with that. Um, the market press did give out one more set of coupons, and that is over with, I believe. End of October 20? October 15th. October 15th. So that's kind of come to a halt that way. Um, for myself, I gave out three in the last head spot. Um, Leanne talked about the things that we see. That kind of thing. And we can all go out to the home and evaluate on the plan. Talking about, I literally reached out to the position and the position is that ordering home care for these. So I have to go liaison for that also. Uh, we've got some in services plans coming up. I have also met with Hospice of Michigan, who is a nonprofit hospice in the area and they have started the new program referred to as health school and we've already made a referral to them on that um she is full of uh ideas for in services and i is willing to send in clinical clinicians to do the teaching this week um so she's very receptive to working with us and i felt like we needed a partner like that Pastors we've had some interaction with, not all of them obvious. And I did find I was not under the impression that they were a for profit, but uh, it turns out they are. Yep. So I think it's a little bit of a different philosophy. Does anyone have any questions for Meg? Okay. Thank you. Okay, financial. Tony? Hi. Um, so not much to touch on. Everybody has the financial report for last month. So um, numbers are numbers. I just kind of wanted to um, hit on our donations for the month of August for our income services and our food, our um, congregate and the home delivered, home delivered meal. We see donations are strictly from our participants. And it's all, you know, whatever they can donate, nothing at all, or whatever they feel. And so this month for those two children we brought in just over $5,200. So that's really great. Um, that they're, they're seeing some sort of value in what we do for them. And I know not everybody can afford to donate anything. So any little bit we get is greatly appreciated. That's the gap between the money we get for grants and then the military kind of has to help offset this program. Um, so it was a little less than in July. July we did six thousand, but still I average about five thousand a month for those two children. It's pretty amazing. Is that just for in-home services or is that for meals on wheels also? For the meals and oh, home service for, for both. Two programs together. Um that it's all donation and it's all anonymous. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are gearing up to the end of the fiscal year. You know, this is the end of the month, the end of our fiscal. So our money and our numbers, um, and stuff, budgets, and all that. I, <laughs> yeah. And tomorrow, uh, Stevenson and Company will be here for our preliminary one day audit for the Christmas Eve Blues Day week long thing in October. So that's what we have to look forward to on that. And uh, as far as like the HR front goes, we've got annual trainings and things we need to do every year, privacy, um, HIPAA, all of those things. So we're completing all of that and getting all of that done. And like this last training was all done this week. So pretty compliant with everything that we need. All the boxes checked for the end of the year. So pretty smooth sailing this year because we're all trying to be more proactive. It's always kind of hard to do. Like, mm -hmm. 
life gets thrown at us, but um, I think we're gonna finish the year strong. Um, a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, whatever, uh, we, our meals cost us a little over $9 to send the meal out to an individual. So we sent a letter, not asking for money, but telling them the situation and asking for donations if possible. Could we do that again, maybe to help out? They usually help whenever we did it, if I remember correctly, it usually helped for a while and then they kind of dwindled down again. So another year later, we would send another letter and explain the situation and- We send monthly statements. Oh, do you? Okay. Um, and they're just, it lets them know how many meals they got for the month and how many hours of like personal care they got for the month or how many hours of homemaking. And Leanne does put that together every month. And it's, it's just a quick donation sheet. It's not like a bill or anything. Right. And it lets them know the, the services that we provided for the month. And then some people will, you know, send a check, you know, just a little thing at the bottom, a little remittance. And some people will, some people will pay for the whole thing that they've gotten. Some people won't at all. And it just varies. But okay. it's also for their records to kind of know and see in black and white everything that was going for them. So we don't, okay. I don't think it's a, a cost allocation as far as how much we pay versus. Oh, well, know, they cost. used to figure that out. I don't know how, I think Susan <clears throat> did it, but I'm not sure how she did it. Well, I mean, I, I can tell you our cost allocation sheet, we will never get a dollar to dollar reimbursement either from the community no. nor from our grant partners. So <laughs> this is the reason why we have a millage is because, you know, the reason why we do this is because we say, we will not decline people's services for people's inability to pay. And COVID also hit a lot of people in the, commu in the community as well. So maybe the individuals who would have donated towards their services are also struggling, you know, because they don't have the extra income that they once actually had or supports that they once actually had. As we know, cost of meat has gone up, you know, by 50%. Gas is back up over $3 a gallon. So you know, so there's other contributing factors. People have to save for heat now. No. So it's one of those things. It's that, you know, it's uh, most of our programs do kind of operate at deficits. Which honestly is basically why there is a COA. It's because they recognize, someone recognized that they need to listen to the help. That's why it's important to get that fundraising committee off the ground so that we bring in. Well, we got to figure out who's on it. <laughs> You're the chairwoman, aren't you, for the fundraising committee? <laughs> I don't think so. I really don't know who's on it. I have no idea. Well, that's that's one of the things that we need to tackle next fiscal because, you know, um, we could do so much and try to raise raise money that could go towards our programs and not living off of grants or not living off of, you know, the individual donations and try to find larger foundations and company donations, which are out there. We just have to show them our case and help uh, get those those funding. Does anyone have any questions for Tony? Financial questions or whatever? Okay, thank you, Tony. Thank you. Uh, Lenny, you wanna? Yeah. Got All right. Anything to talk about? Well, I got a few things, but I'm going to try <laughs> to make it brief and get it and knock off my bullet point. As you can see, we're hiring. We have a lot of positions that are now vacant that were filled that now have to be filled again. Um, and that's kind of the nature of the beast. Right now, it's an employee market. You can go for the job that you want and use the bully pulpit of your personage and to leverage that. So if you are making $12 here and a job can give you 15, they're going to walk over and take that 15. Um, you know, uh, some people believe, well, you know, I've heard a couple of people say, well, I can make more than that at Subway. Well, yeah, they, they put that $15 an hour on the sign that you can make $15 an hour, but that's for management. That's not for their, there's not for their sandwich artists that they come in at. You're not going to come in at $15 an hour. So we have a lot of individuals who consider grass is greener on the other side. So be it. Um, there are some things that we need to talk with the personnel committee about. 
um, that we definitely have to get a meeting. I need I need you guys to meet before the end of the fiscal so we can resolve a few issues uh, that came up with personnel uh, that we need to address. Um, also, um, we are probably hiring three indoor positions and always, always, always hiring for direct care workers. Uh, we're going to try to put some ads in the paper. Um, I haven't seen a lot of feedback from that. Um, we've done Indeed. We've done a lot of your big sites. We've done Facebook. But until people are ready to come back to work, people are just not going to come back to work. Um, there's still some concerns on the pandemic. There's still some concerns on vaccination. There's still some concerns on whether or not it's going to be mandatory vaccinations. So those are the things that are coming down the pipe that I will be dealing with uh, because we are in healthcare. That is one of the things. And this administration has stated that they want healthcare workers to, to also be vaccinated. So those are some of the things that we're looking at coming through in our hiring process and looking at coming through as company policy going forward. Okay. Now, that is the federal administration, not the, that the government, the governor said that would not. Uh, we are very, we're in a different situation because we receive federal and state funds. So it, it has, we have to, you know, but we are under 25 employees and there's some exemptions, but like I said, that's for, that's not, that, that's not a bridge we're coming up yet. That's just me letting the board know that that's on the horizon that in maybe in a few months, this might be something that I have to take a, take a, take a look at, uh, you know, to, 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 to look at that. Okay. Uh, some of our public uh, events that we're going to be doing, uh, ACCOA is taking over Boo Fest. And what Boo Fest is, is a downtown mm -hmm. trick-or-treating on Main Street in, uh, in Harrisville. Dan, I'll be sending you a flyer for Boo, Boo Fest, that you, if you could circulate that out to some of your students. It's open to the public. It's going to be outdoors. It should be fine. Uh, you know, uh, there'll be games. It'll be like a trunk or treat. Uh, they were going to cancel it this year because, again, they couldn't get organized. And I hate seeing community events be canceled because of lack of organization. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that you know, anytime that we can provide a community event where we're there where we can be community to each other, we need to do it uh, because that's what we lost a lot of last year was not having a lot of community. So uh, uh, the date on Boo Fest is October 23rd from 11 to 2 o'clock. Any businesses or anybody that wish to be a part of that can contact us um, and we will get them registered. Um, and we've already got approval. We're going to block off Main Street and just have it straight down Main Street, downtown Harrisville. The following week, which is October 30th, is the chili cook-off here in Lincoln. Uh, ACCOA is going to be, per, uh, be, uh, uh, be there as well. Our theme this year is Wizard of Oz. So we're going to do Wizard of Oz at both events. Um, so the staff and I, we all have costumes. So if the board would like to be a part of that, I'm sure we can we can put you in a monkey suit or you can be, you know, uh, the Tin Man, you know, you can be some uh, maybe even one of the Lollipop Guild, uh, but it should be a lot of fun. We have uh, our vehicles that's going to do that and we're going to have uh, Yellow Brick Road and Cornstock and Dorothy's House. So it should be a lot of fun uh, to do that. And we had a lot of fun uh, last time doing it. Last year when we did it, we had over 750 people come through. Um, just this street. So I'll, um, I, I suspect that we'll have about the same. As we told, talk to you guys about, um, and, uh, and uh, as we got the uh, information about the year in audits, we'll be doing a year in audit for both NEMSCA and for our, our auditors. They are separate. Um, so we'll be projecting our budget numbers for the next year. I believe budgeting this past fiscal, we hit at about a eight hundred thousand dollar operating budget for the year, uh, and that's uh, upwards of about two hundred thousand, of which about four hundred thousand dollars was in reimbursables. So you know you're looking at about three hundred to three hundred fifty thousand dollars of a deficit as of last year. Um, that means, and that's then that's to say that we've you know the, our biggest cost uh, to run what we do is people. Uh, we average about three hundred fifty thousand dollars in payroll, so uh, so that's kind of where we're at. Um, our millage does cover 
a, a considerable part of that. I would love for more of our pay for our fee for service programs to increase. So then we would have a little bit more unrestricted capital to pay for uh, and do more programs. Um, so that's our transportation programs, our fee for services, um, some of our private pay for uh, personal care, our fee for service programs, as well as uh, our uh, Medicaid programs that we're also running. Okay, I was uh, wanted to bring this up to the board. There was a request from the Revolution Dance Program to do a holiday show. They want to do a holiday show in the building uh, for Christmas. Uh, so you get to have uh, nostalgia all again. So they want to bring the kids and do a tap and ballet and all open that up to the public and the seniors. So I just wanted to see if that was something the board would be interested in and allowing them to 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 use the facility um, uh, and to put on a holiday show. I agree. Is there a charge for the person coming in to watch? I believe it's just a suggested donation. So okay. I think they're talking about just doing a suggested donation and it just be open to any and everyone. Um, however, they want to know if there's going to be a capacity limit. You know, I think I said safely, we could probably seat 80 people here. Um, there, I mean, it's big enough that we can we can condense down all of the exercise equipment and put the chairs out. But again, it will be in December for the holiday show. Probably, I believe she said uh, December the 18th is uh, that Saturday. But it would be two shows if she couldn't get more than 80 people in. Um, and I'm, I, and we're uh, trying to also. She's also trying to be mindful of the pandemic as well. But who knows? We'll be we can turn the corner by then. But she wanted to, you know, see if the board would be open to having a holiday show uh, to the public on the, that Saturday. One, she said that she she would consider two shows: one for friends and family, and, and the other one's open to the community. Well, I I like the idea. Does uh, do we need a motion? I I just I just. You know, this is if, if you guys are fine. It if you guys are fine with doing it, we'll just move forward with it and and uh, and go from there. Does anyone have any questions for Lenny concerning the the uh, revolution dance? As far as I'm concerned, I I would say yes. That I think it's a good idea. <clears throat> okay. They need the, the this stage, yeah. So the kids were probably ex come on in. So we would have to clean off yeah. the, the wings, and then the kids would come over. They would probably use uh, the sound systems that's yeah. built in. We'll probably have some speakers facing them so they can hear their music, and then everybody down here would be the crowd, and they'll be able to to see that. Well, the first um, three three years of the show, we thought they're. They had the kids putting on the Christmas play mm -hmm. come up and then use their uh, stage to uh, play on. It. And the last one was just because the stage wasn't big enough. Right. Well, I, you know, um, Revolution dances here every night. So I'm sure that they'll probably figure out the blocking, what they're going to need, you know, and they'll, they'll plan accordingly. I mean, if not, right here. Yeah. yeah yeah or either that you know you know i don't want to put dan on the spot but they have a rage stage you know and there's some other places that we could possibly you know look at things uh but like i said they wanted to use the, the senior center you know as kind of what you had said why don't we do more shows here mm -hmm. and try to bring more people to the center so instead of you know doing doing it at the school trying to do it here at the center to 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 give it as, and it's not going to be uh, like a recital. The recital last year was uh, was really big. We had probably over 150 to 200 people show up for that recital. So doing a holiday show is just more so dancing to Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and Jingle Bell Rock, you know, something cute that the kids can can show what they've been working on. Is the the 18th? Is that the weekend before Christmas? I believe so. I believe that's, I think that's that might, that might be a bad weekend to get the public because well, it a lot of a people. Really nice weekend for the kids to come out with. Yeah, right. but a lot of families have their Christmas weekend before. I know we do. Okay. 
Well, but but she can decide what weekend might be best. And okay, I'm thinking earlier in the earlier in the year, earlier in the month. I mean, yeah, um, yeah. It's it's the following week or with her last class. So that's I believe that's what she she picked that date. Uh, but yeah, so if you guys are okay with using the space, I'll let her know. Okay. Um, there are some also hiring problems and changes over at Nemska. Uh, Vicky, who has been who have been coming and doing our report, she gave her two weeks. So, so the no one is immune to the hiring bug. You know, uh, I know Dan was talking about how he has a lot of turnover. You know, you know, Dan, if you're okay with a sub for one day a week, I I, I do Fridays. Or I was trying to figure out the bus routes, how how I can help. I'm always a glutton for punishment uh, because you know if I can figure out how to help, I try. Um, but yeah, I mean it's we can have a hundred job fairs, you know, and it is not going to drive people off the couch if they don't want to work. And if you yeah. just don't want to have a work or have a work. Um, and, and this is not, this is not just like, I'm not throwing a whole group of people, but there's a lot of people with different circumstances, but because of the new rules that we have to give to and guidelines and background checks and, and drug screenings, we exclude a big population of people that cannot pass those 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 particular things and if you can't relax those rules then you cannot have, have those employees and then you know we're also looking at the state not picking up the two dollar an hour uh, wage increase again this is something i wanted to talk to the personnel committee about uh about we're going to continue it after the 31st because these individuals have already had this in their check for the last couple of months uh, I would like to continue to offer that $2 an hour uh, bonus in their, in their uh, thing. And then we would just continue to track it. And then when the state finally gets it, it, it was supposed to be signed this week, if not next week, but they, they also said it was supposed to be signed at the beginning of September. So we don't know when that's going to come to the governor's desk, but if it, when it does, then we can submit hopefully for reimbursement of the, of the payments that we, that we receive. So they're not going to get a $2 an hour, uh, uh, tomorrow. So Dan says tomorrow that that's, that's supposed to be signed. So, so we're hoping that that's supposed, and then if that is signed, then that $2 an hour premium would become permanent in the budget. Uh, but like I said, you know, we're going to keep it going and then hopefully the state catches up with us. No, that they don't get the extra. There's not going to be a four dollar increase. So they'll just okay, they're two dollars they've been getting. Yeah. So then so like if you were if you were so our baseline is eleven and then the two dollar increase gives you a thirteen. And then we would have that separate on your paycheck as says premium pay. So then we would continue to, to float that premium pay $2 as an agency. And then when the state approves a reimbursement, we would submit our, our receipts and say, reimburse us from September, reimburse us from October. And if they don't, okay, then they don't. But then, you know, going forward, we're not having to eat that cost. They, they'll still be reimbursing us for that. Now, if the state comes in and raises the floor, then that's a little bit more of reimbursables that we can give and pass that on to our employees. But as it states, you know, they see it as well. They're, they're not oblivious to it. They know they've been paying their workers nine to ten dollars an hour. Nobody's coming back for that. You know, there's a lot of different things that have happened over the last year. People have gotten better jobs. People have gotten jobs where they can work from home. So it, the, the whole dynamics have changed. You can even work at McDonald's now for less than thirteen to fourteen dollars an hour. So you know, so this is this is the new. Lonnie, yes, ma'am. How soon do you need that support from the personnel committee or whatever? Because I totally agree, you need to do something to reward people who are staying, and you know, just for the retention factor. Um, how soon are you going to wait to see if this transpires this week or I ha I have already said yes and I, I'm just okay. now informing, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm now informing the personnel committee I said this months ago that I needed to talk to the personnel committee so yep. I had never I never got a chance to get in touch with the personnel committee so I made that decision 
So we have already have plans in the next budget to continue this. So this is me notifying you. However, there's some other items that I cannot supersede you and I need to have you guys uh, to schedule a meeting. So I would love for the personnel committee to schedule a meeting today with me uh, so then we can have all of these things and I can advise you of what has transpired so we can make some decisions for next fiscal year. Dan just suggested that maybe we stay after on the call or something to set a meeting or whatever. That that'd be fine because we're 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 rocking on time and we'll be done done early. So that 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 can be doable because it's only going to take a few minutes for me to kind of tell you what's going on. Okay, and then last and finally, I want to update you on our building project. Okay, so the community center portion, that team that's led by Larry Molnar. Uh, and uh, Dr. Tom, uh, I can make a slaughter his last name, uh, Pendroza <laughs> and Sydney, uh, one uh, our master's candidate uh, from U of M. Uh, they are in the process of working on surveys. Uh, we did uh, at Harmony Week, we did a free t-shirt giveaway to uh, drum up support for surveys. Uh, we're proud to say we got 500. Our target was to get 1,000. So we're still working on trying to get more surveys out. I did a television spot the other day uh, on WBKB, uh, their TV show, uh, Talk of the Town. I'm going to be reaching out also again to the public about trying to get uh, those surveys done, uh, partnership with the schools. They send out surveys to their staff. Uh, what the surveys do is, uh, is what's called a, a community needs assessment. Uh, it's basically asking the community, do you think we need this? Do you think we need uh, the things that we're proposing? Uh, from a lot of the feedback, I could probably say 80 to 90 percent of the respondents agree that we need these type of services, need these type of things in the community. Um, so that is going on. That would probably go to completion after the new year, so after January. And then they'll be typing up their dissertation. Pretty much it's going to be a dissertation. It's like it's going to be a 75 page assessment that they're going to present uh, to our funders, hopefully, uh, with that with that information and project data. Second, um, um, it's it's a step back, but hopefully we take a step forward. We had a meeting with Mishta um, and then we met with their with their their, their design team uh, and they are. 90% on board, but there's a pretty sticky 10%. And the sticky 10% is they don't like uh, wells and sewage water. They, will, they want public, public water and public sanitation. Unfortunately, you're not gonna find that in any rural community. Um, and their definition of rural is not our definition of rural. They considered Elpina, Tawas as rural communities. And they're like, well, why don't you build a project there? Well, that's not helping the people of Lincoln or they're not helping the people of Elkona County. So we are, uh, instead of getting an absolute no by submitting October 1, we're going to delay the submission until April of next year. So that's going to give us six months to continue to work with them. Uh, they did not close the door on us. They don't have any rules for well monitoring and well uh, guidance. Uh, the information that they were presenting at the meeting was incorrect from what we had received. They believe that uh, for one of their concerns is our site is 250 feet away from what they call a high hazard area. And that's the Chris Mart gas station. So they said that if there was a gas leak, that a gas plume could go down into the drinking water. Well, unfortunately, uh, we had to inform them that a site one well is gonna be drilled 150 to 170 feet down. A gas reservoir is only 25 feet into the ground. Even if there was leakage, there's no way it's gonna get down into 150 feet. Plus the way that you build a, 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 a well is that you drill a borehole, you pack it with concrete and the opening of the well is at the top. So not only does the gas have to go down, but now it has to go right back up 150 feet. Uh, 
Then we had to explain to them that even the particulates from the gas, it's only going to sit at the top of the aquifer. And by the own, by gravity and by the movement of the aquifer, that top layer of water is just going to move. And our well is going to be pumping from the bottom of the aquifer. So we need to teach them a little bit about that information and try to work with them so they can kind of see that. Um, and then we also let them know that there are there were two federal facilities or two facilities that actually still pull off of sewage and uh, and wells, and that's Lincoln Manor and Lincoln Haven. Lincoln Haven receives federal dollars and has to do federal compliance, which is more stringent than state compliance. And we have been in talks with uh, with their with their leadership and management over there. They have agreed to work with us to help present our case to Mishta to let them understand that what you are asking for is not actually what we need to give you. Uh, and uh, there was there was a lot of receptiveness in the meeting, but there's like a couple of people who just were not interested in doing rule deals. Um, Unfortunately for us, those people were the rank and file. And the upper management is more receptive. They just want to have some rules in place so that future deals like ours sets a precedent. And right now we're building the track and driving the train at the same time. So the design team, the building team and the partners and I agreed instead of rushing October 1 and getting to know let's talk, let's get this simmered down, let's knock out this last 10% and then submit in April when we know that we have a better yes than a quick no. So that's where we're at with the housing project. Um, and also um, the last bit about the housing project is there's some confusion and it's not from us, it is from, from Mishta as the new guidelines have gone out what the feasibility um, guidelines are. According to two different feasibility models, our guidelines say that our area can handle 30 units. Excuse me. So we're gonna have to reduce the amount of units that we originally uh, sought. We were seeking 44. So that means we're gonna have to reduce it to 30 or somewhere around that area. That's where we're gonna do. So what that means is we're just gonna peel off the top layer of the cake which satisfies a lot of the concerns that we had about not having a ladder truck, having people up on the third floor, that, that is no longer. A lot of this kind of stuff is conceptual. You know, you come up with a concept, you walk into a room, everybody in your room talks about it, you take pieces off. We never had a finished product, we had a concept. And as more and more people gets invited to the table, it starts to take shape. So this is not, uh, we're not dead in the water, but this, like I said, this is a concept that we're still moving forward um, and it's going to continue to move. You know, it's just going to continue to develop as the process continues to go on. Any questions for me about those two particular projects? This is just like a bump in the road then. You yeah. just have to slow down. And slow down and, easy and, 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 and that's the thing, because I think the fear, this, this is my, my interpretation of the room. The fear from Mishta was not our deal, but the 60 other deals that look like us coming behind us. That's not fair to us, but I can understand it. That if they don't have the rules set forth on how they're going to approach rural communities coming forward, they don't wanna waste taxpayer money. So they wanna make sure that they have the rules going forward so that everyone's playing on the same field and that we, because we're, our deal is gonna set the standard. Our, our average wells in this area, let's just say of this mile radius, is the average well 150 or is that closer to 100? It's, it varies, you know, some people have uh, schedule one, some people have schedule two, schedule three wells. Uh, the Dollar General has like a schedule two well, which is like 50 feet. Uh, they had some water pressure issues, but we're not talking about one well. We're actually developing a pumping station 
like that's going to have four to five wells per building that's going to have a pumping re relay station. So then if we need it to pump in chlorine, which I don't know why they're addicted to chlorine, they're addicted to because this is what they've always done. They've never done this kind of system uh, and understand that actually well water is more pure. It has better nutrients. It's not processed. You know, I don't have to flush the toilet for you to get a glass of water. It comes straight out of the ground. Uh, and they're just worried about having too much, uh, too many, too many zines in it, you know, because, you know, Alcona is a farming community, but we don't have any farms around us. It's a logging community. So, it's, so, you know, their idea of rule is, you know, farmhouse, but this is not what we have. And they're still trying to wrap their head around how does Harrisville have city water and city sewage, but Lincoln doesn't, but it has the school and everything else. So, like I said, it's more conversations that needed to be have, and we'll let people, you know, get and look into it and keep working what it. They don't understand it. Harrisville has the big lakes, so they had right. certain things they had to comply with because of the big lake. Um, in order to keep their water not part of the big lake. Right. A big difference. Well, you know, and that's the thing, you know, so they're, you know, I like, they're going back hundreds and hundreds of years. And like I said, we have to tell the story. We have to get our, our ducks in a row. Uh, so now our, our partners are going to be doing a lot of researching, reaching out to people like Eagle, reaching out to people uh, who do all the, the well testings. Uh, and it's not as as scary as they are making it. They're like, oh, your testing could be a hundred uh, thousands of dollars a month. We talked to Lincoln Haven over there, and they said it's barely a hundred bucks a month, you know. And that's the federal testing that they're required to do it. Um, and you know, and that's like I said, it's people that are kind of tongue in cheek and actually having data and information. Well, we have that. We have to have our water tested right here. Mm -hmm. What once a month or every six months or something? You know, we do at the church uh, once a month, and it's fifty five bucks. Yeah. ACCOA. Yeah. Because we had to do it at Greenbush, we had to do it at Glenny, yeah. and and that's and that's the thing. I think that's education because they're not used to having to do that. That that's something that's not within their norm. Well, I mean, and I, like I said, you know, <laughs> uh, we appreciate them, and they're they have they're being good stewards of their monies that the state, the taxpayers are giving them. And we're not gonna begrudge them of that. But if we're gonna ask them for money, you know, and somebody says, well, maybe next week, let's talk about it. We can't call them Scrooge. <laughs> yeah, the point is, we really thought with, that we would be kind of um, one of those that stepped forward in the breach for rural. And this is what takes, when, you, when you're one of the first ones to do this, in a rural community, in our way of thinking, rural, we're going to have some bumps in order to everyone get educated and everyone to understand. And they have to do what they have to do to make sure that they're complying. Right. They're and they had they had one previous deal that they worked with before that is totally not our project, but it was in a rural community sure. that turned into a big headache and it was a cluster. Um, you know, and 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 they're 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 referring back to them, sure. and you know, and I just said we just need a fresh start. That's not us, you know, uh, and we just deserve to have an opportunity to to show what Lincoln can offer. But I um I don't think stepping back is is a bad thing. I think it's stepping back, reorganizing what their concerns are, and. Out of all the things that we brought to them, if their concern is water and sewage, out of everything that we brought to them, that's a pretty good deal. I mean, so you, you're you okay with 90% and just water and sewage is the concern. Okay, then let's let's figure out water and sewage. So that's so that's what we have to do. That's smart, Lenny. Yeah. <clears throat> I look for them to say our things that they all right. Yeah. Right. And I mean, it could have just been like a, no, we're not interested. It's just, okay. Everybody needs a warm fuzzy. And, if, and, and we're talking to the people who ultimately finalize and say yes. So it's not like we're talking to the wrong group. We're talking to the people who are going to be making the decisions. And they're saying, you help me with this, these two points, you have a yes. They realize they're not using their own money. They're using 
taxpayer money, so it has to be. You know. Right. And and they're and they're making a forty year commitment. You know, and that's the thing. Like every deal is not a fifteen year you know, kind of thing. And to keep everything separate, as we have stated before, ACCOA is not gonna subsidize these apartments. These apartments are gonna be their own standalone thing. So we're not taking money from our general fund and paying for repairs in this apartment. This apartment is going to have its own thing. It's gonna be a standalone entity. It's gonna be a standalone agency. So those are the things that we have to, you know, take into consideration. So I can't tell them, well, we have money to, no, we don't. So it has to show that it's going to take care of itself. So that's why we're like, okay, let's go back over the numbers, show how we can pay for testing, show how we can pay in case of emergencies. Yes, it does hurt that we lose, you know, um, the amount of units that we were asking for. No, do they care that SpaceX is coming? No, do they care that, Coletta's just built a new hangar. No, they want to see right now. And in six months, we may be in a better position than where we were this time. Because even if we submit it in April, we won't find out to October. So we're looking at a, a little bit of a six month delay. So, which is not bad overall. All right, and that, that's pretty much me. Any, any other questions? Okay, we'll move on to old business. Um, I'm not sure if this is old business, but I think we need to check on snow plowing for this coming winter. Um, is this something that, that like Michelle can check on different, like John's home maintenance and Patagonia and this guy and this guy and this guy? Or is it something that the board should, like on the uh, building and grounds committee, should that board get together and call all these different people and see what, you know, call stout? I don't think you, I don't think you have to call. I think the building and ground committee can do like a big overview. We are allowing 100, 150 bucks a month for this for plowing and i'm sure probably you should allot a little bit more than that because if it snows twice right. that's your whole budget but if you say we're allowing this company or allowing this amount of money to be spent in snow plow and snow removal then our staff can go through you guys are big picture we're the minutia so we we're the one to get in the weeds so you just basically say okay the building the ground committee is going to authorize you to spend 200 bucks a month uh, throughout the winter for snow plow. Okay, cool. Then we will shop and get estimates from people. But you guys do that though. We, we don't, you don't we have, have to do that. that. You guys are big picture. We're, we're the tiny picture. Now, can they, can they also say we need snow plowing at the ARA site once a month? I, I don't want to do that because the ARA site, we're gonna go, it's a big site and it's going to require like earth breaking. Like we don't have that. Well, um, we can't really go on their uh -huh. site. Well, we can use it, but they said that we'll be responsible 100% for snow plowing. And that's several hundreds of dollars because not only do we have to snow plow right in front of the Sullivan building, we have to snow plow the entire field where people are parking. Right, but that shouldn't take that much money or time, should it? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm just telling you that once that's there and that layer, layer of ice gets there, it's gonna require heavy tractors and heavy machines. Yes, Rollin. Yeah, because of uh, Percy. Percy, his son is on seven eight hundred dollars on snow plowing. Yeah, I think he did it twice, two or three times, and and he broke broke some piston on his truck or something like that, and and you know, but like I said, we just the village is not going to assist in the ARA site. The county doesn't have the equipment to do it there. So why not go back to the village to something that they own that they already would plow, you're willing to plow and they have the ability to plow while we just do it right here in this field. But it's all outside. And you've got a lot of food that you're putting out there and you've got a lot of people you're gonna to ask to stand out there in, in zero weather. But they're or already out. rain or snow, sleet. But okay, this is something that we could figure out but I, I will say this, they're already outside anyway when they're sitting outside the Camel building. 
the, the park people who are parked in their cars are already waiting in their cars anyway. That's not going to make a difference if they wait at right. the ARA. To them, I'm talking volunteers. And... The, the volunteers wouldn't be outside. Where were the volunteers? The volunteers would be in the building. Over here? Here. Here. Right here. In this building. They would be here in this How building. How are you going to get all that food in here? Through with a truck and a door and a ramp, and we will break it down. And, and, and then a lot would... of muscles. Well, that's the that's the part of the pantry coordinator to coordinate. That's their one job. They do that twice a month. That's their job to figure this out every month. That's why we, that that's that's what that's what her responsibility was supposed to do was to do that herself and to find the volunteers, so that that program continues to go on during the winter. And she was successful. So. I know somebody will be successful at just as that. Well, good luck. Yep. Okay, you're going to take care of the snow plowing and whatever. Well, building a grounds for kids in the Building and grounds is going to meet before you get a price. How is how is building and grounds going to say? We're going to spend the four hundred dollars, and then this you guys call and say no, we want five hundred. So do we just tell John's home maintenance, sorry, but you went over the budget, or do we say, well, let me go back to the board and see if they'll give another hundred? But that's, but that's okay. But what you do is you set a budget, okay? So you say, you know. Like say, for example, I'll do it this way. If you if you say, kids, I'm gonna give you $20 to go to the arcade and you have to be there four hours. And if you blow that $20 in the first 25 minutes, you're still standing there three hours and 30 minutes. So what you do is you set a budget and you say, maximum is $500. And then what you do is you contact the agency to stay within that budget. How much is it gonna cost? And you say, whenever we're three inches or more, you come and plow for this area and every time it's 50 bucks. Okay, so I know every time John Home Maintenance comes out, it's $50. So I know he can come out a maximum of six times or you know, or 10 times this month because it's 50 bucks a plow. So if we don't have $50, if we don't have 10 times in the month that they come out, then the budget rolls over to the next month. And then well, and then that because there's sometimes it's you don't need a box. Exactly. We had some mild days last winter that we didn't have that. It was just very cold and that just had a lot of permafrost and ice. Yeah, if any, we'll get with Lenny and figure out the price. Yep. Well, I know like at the county building, they set up, they have a, they have a uh, allowance. This is what they're going to have. So whoever gets hired, whether it's John's home maintenance or Aglins or whomever, is aware of it. that's what they're going to get. Mm -hmm. month. Yep. And so we work if they only that. plow twice, they're still going to get it? Not the full amount, Dolores. They're only going to so get, they're, they're only going to get what plow. they plow. They're only going to get what they plow. Mm -hmm. We're not just going to hand somebody $500 a month and say, use it when you come out. No, they're going to have an invoice. We're going to have... Uh, a line item code that is going to be allocated towards and we're going to track it and the whole kit and caboodle. Unless the board wants to buy a, a snowplow truck. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> is there any other new business? Are there any questions before we adjourn? I'll ask for a call. motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Stan made a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Second. Kim seconds. Okay, our next meeting will be in October. I don't know just what the date is, but the fourth Tuesday of October.
Okay. So as of 11.45 a.m., the meeting is adjourned. The fourth Tuesday will be the 25th. Mm -hmm.